I welcome you all to this special event, an event organized in memory of late Professor Radam Narsimha. Professor Radam Narsimha, popularly known as Radam, was an outstanding academician and the doyen of Indian aircraft industry. Of course, I have had a, a unique relationship with Professor Nasima. We both of us are alumnus of same institutions. We graduated from Bangalore University Vishwashaya College of Engineering with a bachelor's degree. And then we had the master's degree at the Indian Institute of Science. Of course, the similarity ended there. Professor Narsimha's contribution to the Indian aerospace industry, academic world, is so huge, we thought it was fit to have a memorial lecture on his honor on this day, which happens to be the birthday of Professor Narsimha. I also had an opportunity of Professor Narsimha on the same committee to improve the University of College of Engineering. But we have had many, many discussions on technology in India, education in India, engineers and how should be trained in India. And I have spent one of the most memorable times under discussion with Professor Narsimha. Professor Narsimha's passing away release, release a gap which I'm afraid cannot be filled. Today, we are having the first Professor Radam Narsimha Memorial Lecture. And as Professor Gopal Krishna pointed out, we would like to make it an annual event and we welcome you all to join those annual events for years to come. I welcome you all to this function, my special welcome to Professor Indranil Panna, the President of the Indian National Academy of Engineering. The first lecture will be delivered by Professor K. R. Srinivasan, one of the earliest students of Rodan Asima, and will, you will shortly hear his bio data, which clearly indicates his as tall a figure as Professor Asima that we are celebrating. My special invitations to Professor Nilima, Mrs. Narsimha, who is going to inaugurate this function. I hope what we have done today is not just in memory of Narsimha only, but the process of engineering in India and how well it has progressed. I now request to Professor Jagadish to continue the program. Thank you. So before Thank you, Dr. Atre, lovely. Yeah, so, yeah. Am I audible? Yes. Yeah, Gopi, can I continue or you wanted to say something? No, I just wanted to say that uh, we have uh, uh, two parts of the presentation here about uh, Narsimha's contribution. It's very difficult to actually summarize this in five to ten minutes. Uh, the amount of contributions that Narsimha has made. So what we have made is we have got two presentations. One, uh, uh, Professor Narsimha, Professor Gendish will basically tell about his technical contributions, what he has made. And the second one, we are playing a small video prepared by NAL on his contributions to the national program. So both together will basically will give you an idea about how much of contributions Nasima has made uh, to this country and also to the technical uh, te technical aspects of the fluid dynamics. So I request now uh, Jagdish, Professor Jagdish to talk about his technical contributions. A lovely good evening to all of you. And uh, we have all assembled here via online today to celebrate the extraordinary life of Professor Adam Nasima. His life's journey in science is full of intellectual pursuits to the highest order. I will only try my level best to summarize the essence of his scientific and technological accomplishment. Well, I repeat, I can only try. I will also try not to be nostalgic on an overwhelming occasion like this. 
and try to restrict myself to the work that he has done in the areas of flow transition and turbulence research. Professor Arun, as he is popularly known to all of us, throughout his life enjoyed dabbling with laminar, transitional, and turbulent behavior of fluid flow in multifarious situations. The sudden onset of violent, often chaotic behavior of the fluid, which could be air, water, or in some cases even blood, has profound influence in our daily life. Low turbulence impacts both terrestrial, air travel, space travel, climate change, monsoon, pharma, chemical industry, biomedical, and you can go on and on. Professor Aaron, in some sense, was a master storyteller who had an uncanny ability to use experiments, analytical and numerical tools to understand complex fluid dynamic situations and unravel the mystery. His early work as a part of his master's thesis in IASC under Professor Satish Dhawan was actually published in the Journal of Fluid Mechanics way back in 1958. And surprisingly, it continues to be cited by leading researchers around the world even today. The title of this paper reads, Some Properties of Boundary Layer Flow During Transition. It appears rather modest. Well, of course, that is how RN was throughout his life. But the paper actually embodies profound findings. He came up with the universal correlation of intermittency factor with length scale which actually follows the classical yes curve pattern. He demonstrated how simple pitot tube measurement can be used to clearly show the dominant role played by intermittency in the generation of turbulent spots. Based on the experimental result, he deduced a unique relationship between the transitional Reynolds number to the rate of production of turbulent spots. Surprisingly, the findings that he did way back in 1950, that subsonic speed in a low turbulence wind tunnel in IAC, which we still have at 25 meters per second, even today, seems to hold good at hypersonic speeds. Professor Arun, in many ways, was far ahead of his time in terms of his intuitive thinking and fresh ideas. Along with Professor Lipman from Caltech, in 1962, he demonstrated the intricacies associated with the structure of a plane shockwave. Very surprisingly, the shockwave profiles were computed in those days using Butnagar Gross Group model using the Boltzmann equation. And he also actually had a uniformly converging iterative scheme starting from the Navier Stokes solution. Following his PhD at Caltech, Professor Arden returned to IASC to nurture and build one of the most successful research and academic enterprise in the Department of Aeronautics in those days in IASC. It was in 1968. In a classical disposition in the Journal of Sound and Vibration, Professor Arun for the first time formulated the mathematical framework to describe and understand the nonlinear vibration of an elastic string. After formulating the exact equations of motion for the string, he also gave a systematic procedure and he obtained the approximations of the equation to any order. Now, this single author paper from Professor Arun is certainly very significant in many ways because it laid the foundation for the progress in the field of nonlinear mechanics. Surprisingly, in later years, he did not pursue work in this area. But then his deep insight and interest in computational methods in fluid and solid mechanics certainly acted like a catalyst in later years, resulting in the establishment of several supercomputing facilities in, within India. In 1971, for the first time, he experimentally demonstrated the effect of periodic bursts in turbulent boundary layer. Uh, he also rather prophetically concluded in this work that the dynamics of energy balance in a turbulent boundary layer can be understood only based on coupling between the inner and the outer layer. The required electronics for carrying out these experiments and as well as the filtering circuits, mind you, ladies and gentlemen, were all indigenously built in IASC in the 1970s. And the quality of data is something which will you know, keep anybody spellbound even today. Professor Arun also carried out some very novel work in the year 1972 on the equilibrium and relaxation process in a turbulent wake flow, where for the first time he showed that the measured Reynolds process approach a new equilibrium state in the wake in an exponential manner with a relaxation scale of the order of 10 to the power of 3 of the momentum thickness. Professor Arun was always in the forefront of setting up both experimental as well as computational facilities for the advancement of science and technology. I only name very few here, the hypersonic wind tunnel, the supercomputing research center in IAC. These actually demonstrate the foresight and thought leadership abilities of Professor Nasima. 
Mind you, the seeds for building these facilities were actually sold when India never had any program in the hypersonic or never really conceptualized a national program of using a supercomputer. I have actually heard about the childlike joy and passion that drove Professor Arun towards institution building. In fact, some of my senior colleagues in the department still recall that Professor Arun stood near the aerospace engineering department below a tree and he distributed sweets to everyone who was going on that road on the day when IAC administration approved the establishment of CAOS, the Center for Atmospheric and Oceanic Sciences. Professor Nazima deeply believed in high end science should pay way for the translational research, culminating eventually in indigenous technologies with deep social impact. He provided the intellectual impetus to modeling of Indian monsoon, bringing in new ideas of atmospheric boundary layer and the need to include fluid dynamic effects in understanding the onset of monsoon in the Indian subcontinent. This actually resulted in the famous Montoplex monsoon trough boundary layer experiment along with uh, several of his own students like Professor Prabhu, Bhatt and others. What is very interesting about this experiment was the way they involved private industry in those days, building world-class centers and data acquisition electronics. And I am told by people who are involved that even the Americans who were trying to collect data during those times were actually very impressed with the quality of instrumentation to support such an experiment. Several seminal papers in atmospheric sciences came of a far and stable during the 90s and 2000s. Measurement of drag coefficient at low speeds using sonic anemometers in Jodhpur and Karakpur during Montablox 90. Laboratory experiments on plumes to simulate the effect of heat release that occurs in clouds and condensation of water vapor. Establishing a possible connection between Indian monsoon and solar activity. And finally, the historic laboratory experiment that clearly proved that the diabetic heating drives the cumulus cloud evolution and entrainment, which actually appeared in the proceedings of National Academy of Sciences in 2011. Sheer engineering acumen of Professor Aaron is evident in the way he solved the problems of Avro 748 airworthiness. Thanks to Professor Dr. Vishwanath who pointed this out, he actually played a very key role in assessing the flight safety of HS 748 of Indian Airlines which actually had a second segment climb gradient of much smaller than the airworthiness requirement. He used extensive testing and Monte Carlo simulation to solve a problem that actually nation faced in those days. I have not dared to mention here about the relaminarization work of Professor Aaron in the 70s and of course during later years. Professor KRS, who in some sense is a living amalgamation of tremendous intellectual capabilities of Professor Aaron, will enlighten us today in the first RN Memorial Lecture. RN's contribution to India's aeronautic space and defense sectors have been very nicely captured in a movie from our friends in CSNIL. I'm sure that movie will give more details. From Saran's lifetime work, we see several facets, actually. Hello. Of course, yes. forgive me for missing out several of the important work of uh, in the Boltzmann equation, high nuts and number flow, then the wonderful work that PR Vishwanath himself carried out as a PhD student, Nice work in later years with Rama Govind Raj, and I think the list actually goes on and on. I have just made it a point to pick up only the major one. So in some sense, we actually see several facets of R and starting from a passionate scientist, innovative engineer, daring technocrat, an institution builder. More than anything, I believe all of us who were assembled here would agree that he was a wonderful human being who truly believed in the concept of classical Vasudeva Kutumbakam, universal oneness, and the whole universe is a family. And it actually bears testimony that people from all parts of the world have joined today to celebrate the work of one of the illustrious sons of modern India. I just want to thank the organizers for giving me an opportunity to briefly reminisce on the work of Professor Arun on this occasion. Special thanks to my friends, Professor Ramesh and Dr. PRV for enlightening and stimulating discussions on the scientific work of Professor Pradam Nasima. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Jagdish. Now I request uh, Nilesh to play the video of his, of his uh, contribution to the national programs. Uh, Nilesh, can you play the video? It should start anytime. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. 
Are you able to play it? Yeah, it's playing, Gopi. It's yeah. playing. Okay. It's not playing anymore. I apologize. Let me start again. Um, is it playing? It is. It is not moving. Okay, no. just one second. Let's restart it. There is a slight overload I'm seeing here. Yeah, we are not Let's able do to it again. It. No yeah. problem. Just one second. Take two seconds to get this up. So ready. Just one second, please. Uh, there's a Google is acting funny today. Uh, Nilesh, it looks like a lot of people are not able to join because of the 100 limit that we have. Is that uh, true? Or I didn't know Google had a limit. So uh, it is flashing some uh, messages that there are some technical issues. Um, so I didn't know Google had a limit. Um, so yeah, I don't know. There is a problem. Yeah. Oh, okay.
Thank you, Nilesh. Thank you very much. I am very sorry that many people wanted to join this event, but unfortunately, there are some issues, more than 100. We really apologize. Uh, I now request uh, our IEA president, Professor uh, Indanil Banda, to address the gathering. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening. First and foremost, uh, Mrs. Uh, Rodam Narsima. Dr. Atre, Chairman Bangalore Chapter, Professor Gopal Krishnan, Professor Kiyar Srinivasan, the eminent scientist who is going to deliver the first Rodham Nasima Memorial Lecture today, and a very illustrious uh, student of uh, Dr. Nasiman himself. First and foremost, on behalf of Indian National Academy of Engineering, I would like to pay our most earnest respect and homage to the memory of the departed soul. Probably the, the most eminent and illustrious aerospace engineer that this country has ever seen so far. We are very happy that the Bangalore chapter has come forward with their proposal and now they have realized their project of hosting the annual Radham Narsima Memorial Lecture. Incidentally, this is going to be the first of the series that INE would like to uh, organize through the chapters in future. I'm saying we have, of course, lost very eminent academy uh, fellows in the past, but it's for the first time that we are instituting an award lecture in the memory of a departed fellow. So thank you very much, Bangalore chapter. We already heard a very nice uh, a composition on the contributions made by Professor Narsiman. We also saw a very nice film made by National Aeronautical Laboratory, thanks to them. I just realized today that uh, Professor Narsiman received his uh, PhD in 1961, the year I was born. So there was, you know, the first time I saw his uh, photograph, basically, not him in person, uh, through a photograph which used to adore the wall of our drawing room in our home, uh, Professor Narsiman received. Uh, Hari Om Trust uh, Award, or J.C. Bose Award, instituted by Hari Om Trust and awarded through UGC in 1976. Of course, I had no clue about who this uh, uh, Professor Narsiman was at that point of time, but he received the award. Uh, I saw a picture with my father standing in the frame along with uh, four or five others, and Professor Radam Narsiman also was one of them, standing in the corner. And uh, of course, in the center was the Prime Minister, the then Prime Minister, Mrs. Gandhi. And then I actually first interacted, had the opportunity of interacted with, interact with him. That was many years later, uh, maybe about 10, 15 years ago, uh, in a selection committee where he was chairing and I was one of the members. And throughout the selection interview, I found him asking only about the vision and the dream it was a selection of a director of a lab. And his only question he asked to all the candidates was that, what would you do if you are given this particular responsibility? He never asked any typical bureaucratic question, never inquired about the date of birth or degrees or so on and so forth. And subsequently, I had also opportunities of interacting with him on several occasions in CSIR and other national events. And in him, I found absolutely a most devout scientist one could ever see, someone who is completely committed only for the growth of science and technology. We have a lot to learn from him. And on behalf of INE, I would like to inform the audience that one of his major dreams of seeing 
India producing its own aircrafts. This is a dream that now we have taken over, INE has taken over, and thanks to the initiatives of two of our former uh, presidents, uh, Dr. Goel and Dr. Suresh, we are now pursuing it very seriously with the government through the offices of the PSA and, and other avenues. And I think that would be the richest tribute that we could pay uh, to the legend called Rodam Narsima if this country in near future eventually be able to produce regional transport aircraft of its own. So I thank Bangalore chapter again and on behalf of INE, again, I record our deepest respect and homage to the departed soul. And I'm sure this lecture series would create a true a follow-up for the great memory of Professor Rodam Narsima. Thank you very much. And I look forward to listening to Professor Nars Srinivasan. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Narsima. Thank you very much. And uh, I, I now request uh, uh, Mrs. Narsima to say a few words and uh, uh, inaugurate this event. Mrs. Narsima. Namaskara. Uh, I am overwhelmed my, by all the things that have been said about my husband, um, my daughter, Maitreyi, I and the Rodham family are delighted and feel greatly honored that the Bangalore chapter of the Indian Ac National Academy of Engineering has instituted this lecture series in my husband's name. I'm sorry I'm getting a little emotional, but uh, please pardon me. I would like to thank Professors Gopal Krishnan and Jagadish and all the others who have made it possible. My thanks <coughs> to Dr. VK Atre, who has interacted with my husband on various projects and occasions for his kind words <coughs> about my husband. My, my thanks are also due to Professor Manna for his kind words. I will not venture to speak about my husband. I'm still discovering his many facets. All I can say is I feel blessed to have shared all these years sorry, with him. One thing I'd like to mention here is that he enjoyed what he was doing. He said to me once, I'm being paid to do the things I like to do. Isn't that wonderful? Credit should go to a large extent to all the students who kept his interests alive, all the time picking his brain. All of them have gone on to achieve great heights, some as colleagues, and have kept in touch with him as a family. Thanks are also due to the innumerable people at all levels who have worked tirelessly to meet impossible deadlines. I'm sure it wasn't easy. I now have a great pleasure in inaugurating this session. One couldn't have chosen a better speaker than Professor K. R. Srinivasan to deliver the first lecture. He has achieved great distinction, of which my husband was proud. To me, he has been a close friend and a well wisher. Thank you, Srinivasan. Cheers, wishing you many, many joys and happiness. Thank you, Mrs. Narsimha. It is really nice of you to have brought up very important aspect of uh, uh, Professor Narsimha's life, which you shared. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for uh, inaugurating this event. Thank you very much. I now call upon uh, uh, Professor Nilesh Mehta to introduce the speaker.
Professor K. Ashinwasan. Neelis, can you be very brief? Uh, okay, yeah, I shall try my best, uh, Professor Ashinwasan. Uh, okay, so, um, yeah, so uh, it's my uh, privilege to introduce Professor Srinivasan, who is an alumnus of IISC. He completed his PhD in aerospace engineering from IISC in 1975, uh, the year that I was born. And uh, before that, his ME in aerospace engineering uh, from uh, IISC again in 1970. Uh, currently, he's a university professor at uh, NYU or New York University. I should note that this is a title conferred upon scholars whose work is interdisciplinary and reflects exceptional breadth. Uh, he was the dean of NYU's uh, Tandon School of Engineering from 2013 to 2018. Uh, prior to NYU, he served uh, from 2003 to 2009 as the director of the International Center for Theoretical Physics in Trieste, Italy for nearly seven years. Earlier, he taught at the University of Maryland for about a year and a half as a, a distinguished university professor. Prior to that, he taught at Yale University for almost 22 years, starting from 1979. Um, at Yale, he was uh, the Harold W. Cheel Professor of Mechanical Engineering from 1988 to 2002. And he also had joint appointments in the departments of physics, applied physics, and mathematics. Uh, prior to Yale, his postdoctoral work included two years in Australia and a similar period of time at the Johns Hopkins University. He's been a visiting professor at Caltech, Rockefeller University, Cambridge University, the Institute for Advanced Study at Princeton and many others. Um, now I'll quickly go over his honors and I'll keep it brief. Um, so Professor Srinivasan's many honors include the Dagenheim Fellowship, the Otto Leporte Memorial Award of the American Physical Society, the World Academy of Sciences, Medal Lecture in Engineering Science, Distinguished Alumnus Award and the Centennial Professorship of IAC, Sir C. V. Raman Visiting Professorship of the Indian Academy of Sciences, the International Prize and Gold Medal in the memory of professors Modesto Panetti and Carlo Ferrari, Academia delle Scienze di Torino, Italy, uh, the highest scientific honor of the Brazilian government, which is the National Order of Scientific Merit, the UNESCO Medal for Promoting International Scientific Cooperation and World Peace from the World Heritage Center, Florence, Italy, President Dr. Zakir Hussain Memorial Award from the Duty Society and the Indian Society of Applied and Industrial Mathematics, honorary membership of the Academia Torre Tasso, Duino, Orissina, Trieste, Italy, the Melvin Jones Fellow of the Lions Club for Humanitarian Service, the Dwight Nicholson Medal of the American Physical Society for Human Outreach, the 2009 Nasselt Reynolds Prize from the Assembly of World Conference on Experimental Heat Transfer, Fluid Mechanics and Thermodynamics, the 2009 AAAS Award for Industrial Scientific Cooperation, and the 2011 Multicultural Leadership Award of the National Diversity Council. Um, he's been elected to the Indian Academy of Sciences and the Indian National Academy, of, uh, Indian National Science Academy, the Academy of Sciences for the Developing World, the African Academy of Sciences, the U.S. National Academy of Sciences, the U.S. National Academy of Engineering, the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, and the Academia di Lince in Italy. His primary expertise is in fluid mechanics and turbulence. His other interests include complex fluids, nonlinear dynamics non-equilibrium phenomena and cryogenic helium. He's also interested in the mathematical modeling of global change and biomechanical phenomena. He's the author of 240 research papers. He has supervised about 30 PhD thesis and has mentored numerous students at Yale and elsewhere. As we have seen, he has uh, very ably served the scientific community in both official and scholarly capacities. He's been instrumental in creating new entities, such as the topical group in statistical and nonlinear physics of the American Physical Society. Lastly, I would like to close by saying that he's also very interested in human rights, especially as they apply to scientists. So with this, I hand over the floor to Professor Srinivasan. Um, and uh, a request to everybody in the audience, kindly mute your microphones and also shut off your video if you can. Um, that will really help. Thank you. Um, thank you, Nilesh, for those uh, kind words. Let me see if I can uh, um, start with my slides. Um, I had it all organized before. Where do I go now? Um, at the bottom, you will see an up arrow inside a box. I'm not seeing that. Uh oh, um, um, I'm uh, not seeing that anymore. That was my concern, actually. Uh, are you seeing your presentation or are you seeing the Google? I'm seeing just the gallery of pictures now. 
Um, at the bottom, you have a set of icons there. There, there is a arrow icon. No, no, I don't see that icon. I saw it earlier. Everything seemed fine. It, we checked it already. Mm. Uh, All right, let me see a window. I got that. I think we awesome. don't know here. We seem to be in good order. Can you see my slide? Uh, not yet. Uh, yep, something is happening. Yeah. Yes. Yes. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Let me get my pointer. Yes, that's good. Distinguished uh, colleagues, INAE officers and fellows, and Dr. Neelim Manarasimha, Professor Maitre Narasimha, and uh, many friends. Allow me to greet you all on the 88th uh, birthday of Professor Narasimha. It is sad that he is not here, but the purpose of my talk is to celebrate his accomplishments and legacy, however inadequate uh, that may turn out to be. I will, of course, by necessity, be very selective and therefore very incomplete. First and foremost, I would like to um, congratulate the Bangalore chapter of the Indian National Academy of Engineering on organizing the annual lecture in uh, Professor Narsimha honor. I expanded the title of my talk a little bit to include a few remarks on uh, Professor Narsimha because uh, this inaugural talk serves also as a certain ceremonial event. And there may well be people uh, in the audience who don't know basic facts about him. I will also attempt to make this uh, lecture generally accessible to non-experts on uh, relaminalization. I always uh, address uh, Professor Narsimha as RN, so I will use those same initials in my talk today as well. There are many photographs of RN that I know of, but he himself seemed like the one that is shown here, taken in uh, uh, NIAS in 1999. I am still looking for one that reveals his inner essence. Dr. Srinivasan, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, yeah. You will have to reshare yeah. again. Um, Sorry. Uh, I have um, to reshare. Yes, because somebody just took over the screen and started sharing. So yeah, I'm sorry, you did have to reshare. Did you hear all the things I said until Absolutely. now? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. So let yeah. I stop sharing now. Okay, and I now reshare. Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Can you see? Audience. it? Yep, thank you. Okay, now I can uh, go on. Um, as I was saying earlier, I'm still uh, looking for a picture of his that reveals uh, somehow his uh, inner essence. Uh, it is a full surrender, I have uh, no doubt. Let me begin with um, a few thanks. First, uh, many thanks to Chairman uh, VK Atre and uh, Secretary uh, S. Gopal Krishnan for inviting me to deliver this lecture. Also the president of the academy for being here and making the remarks. Even though I won't use uh, much of the material from this article that uh, Bhatt and I wrote about uh, Aran when he was still around, uh, which uh, some part, at least in some parts he liked. Uh, I would like to thank uh, my um, collaboration with uh, G.S. Bhatt. And I want to thank uh, especially Maitri Narasimha, who is a professor in TIFR, and uh, Ms. K. Nagratna, who was uh, RN's personal assistant for many years, for answering my endless questions about RN and providing some personal material and information about him, which I have used uh, here and elsewhere. Today, by accident, as it were, I received from Aravinda Shastri, Professor Aravinda Shastri, uh, this uh, so social media post uh, just released. It's very nice indeed. Bhavana has just produced a collection of RN's writings about himself, 
And uh, the issue has been very kind uh, to include a brief note from me. In that note, I have recorded my personal interactions with RN, into which I won't go uh, today. Let me make some observations about uh, Professor Narsimha's uh, family background to the extent that one needs to appreciate uh, his starting point. To orient this map, uh, here is uh, Bangalore. If you, if you can see my laser pointer, that's Bangalore. And this is the border between um, Karnataka and Andhra. And here is uh, Rodam, the town. And uh, this is uh, Tumkur, uh, which you uh, know about. Rodam is where the ancestral family of uh, uh, Aran uh, came from. And Aran's grandfather, uh, Rayapa, moved uh, from his ceremonial home uh, from Rodam to Pavagada, which is somewhere here, um, about 100 kilometers north of uh, Tumkur in Karnataka. When um, Aran's uh, father, R.L. Narasimhaya, R.L.N., he is uh, very popularly known as, began his high school studies in Tumkur. He stayed with the family of a Dr. B.D. Raghavendra Rao, who was the district medical officer there. High school studies were followed up with a Bachelor of Science degree in Bangalore, during which R.L.N. stayed in Ramakrishna Ashrama for some time. Around that time, uh, a date unknown, both the Raipa and the Raghavendra Rao families moved to Bangalore. The then Divan of Mysore, Sir Mirza Ismail, once consulted Dr. B.D. Raghavendra Rao on a medical matter. Pleased with the advice, Ismail apparently gave away to Raghavendra Rao the gift of the land that Ismail's heart has had casually circumnavigated during the time of the consultation. That land, then empty of any activity, is now a bustling part of Bangalore, the Raghavendra colony. I'm not sure that the family benefited anywhere from the riches of this, as one might expect. Dr. Raghavendra Rao was the uh, uh, grandfather of Aran's mother, uh, Leela Devi. And this is how it came about. Around the time uh, RLN graduated with a bachelor's degree, Dr. Raghavendra Rao and his son, Dr. B.R. Subaral, were planning the marriage of the latter's three daughters. RLN, whom they knew from earlier years, was now ready for marriage as well. The horoscopes of the three girls were matched with RLN's, and because the best match was with that of Leela Devi, the marriage ensued. And um, uh, Leela Devi was about 10 at that time, and that was not very unusual. And this is how they looked uh, somewhat later. RLN went off to Allahabad to get his master's degree um, in wireless, studying under the illustrious uh, Meghnath Saha. As you no doubt remember, Saha had already derived his famous radiation formula to relate the astrophysical spectra to temperature using quantum mechanics, statistical mechanics, and so on. Even today, his pioneering work forms the basic ingredient of radiation physics. Aryan was the first son of uh, RLN and uh, Leela Devi. Now, um, RLN um, became a beloved teacher of science at the Central College and a great expositor to the public of science in Kannada. He was amazingly clear in his articles and uh, Air India interviews and uh, things like that. And uh, was uh, very much appreciated uh, by everybody. And he worked very hard in his talks and writings against the general superstition of daily life. He was greatly appreciated, as I said, by his colleagues, students, and friends, as is evidenced by the this book, a 600-page uh, book that was written about him. This is the cover page. Now, Aran himself wrote in that book a short article on RLN uh, with the title Shamana, which was the name by which RLN was called at, at his uh, home, household. I present this uh, first page. And to those who cannot read Kannada, just a little translation. 
of the first few sentences. My earliest memory of father is about relatives who used to talk, take him to task. To those who asked him, what is this I say? Your children not only talk to you in singular noun form, but also use your proper name to address you. His response was a smile and silence, as if it is fruitless to debate it with them. He would say with a bit of pride, my desire is that my children act independently according to their wishes. I think that was a good uh, starting point. Before I finish this part of the story, let me make the two remarks. The parental influence often repeated, but I saw them first myself in the article that Butt and I wrote on this, on RN. And somewhere in his writings, Aaron says that he did not formally learn much science from his father, but that he absorbed some important qualities from him, scientifically modern, socially liberal, and culturally conservative, as he described it later. And his mother did not attend school beyond age 10. This was the custom for young women in those days. But she was sophisticated and well-read. The prayers she taught her children were to recite for intelligence and knowledge. I think those are extremely good uh, points. I have tried to convey these aspects uh, here anecdotally because I think it tells you a little bit about RN. He was from a middle-class South Indian Brahmin family with tremendous appreciation for culture and learning, one in which tradition coexisted with a very critical attitude, a love for debate and logic, and personal pride in doing things well. These elements gave him a terrific starting point and made up for the absence of raw ambition and one-upmanship. But it was not at all obvious uh, to anyone who just looked at him at that point in his life that he would become the giant that he did. That was his own work. Hard work combined with the genuine uh, ability, uh, which I call a bit of genius. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> I will now try to uh, uh, turn to uh, Aaron's uh, academics. But again, I will be very selective. <clears throat> well, instead of choosing uh, to go to railway service, he went to the Indian Institute of Science in 1953. And that was him studying um, burning midnight oil, as I called it here. Um, I had to get rid of something. OK, I can't do it. Uh, notice the time on the clock, 12.30 it is. And uh, this is him playing Veena, Veena with uh, his brother looking on. And uh, Maitri said to me once that they still have the Veena, but uh, that it has not been uh, used in her memory. <clears throat> I knew that Arun was very fond of music, both Indian and Western classical. Also, other aspects of cultural life, such as uh, dance and poetry. But he did not wear all these interests on his sleeve, so to speak. Though he came and visited me several times in the US, we never went to a concert together. We are both uh, compulsively oriented towards our own work or just talk. The longest uh, lasting influence on, uh, on um, <clears throat> RN was Satish Dhawan. And uh, this was how Dhawan looked around, looked at the time Aaron came to know him. And this is how he was in 1980. Very rare that he smiled in his photographs, by the way. And I wrote elsewhere an article on uh, Dhawan, so I won't, uh, I won't tell you very much. But here is what Aaron said somewhere. The philosophy of wanting to do serious research, but also wanting to do something that would be of use directly to the country, um, informed uh, Dhawan's work. Even though I'm sure Aaron was very impressed by this uh, statement, I'm not certain that he practiced it. 
For him, science was a game that had to be played on the international scene on its own serious terms, while country's development work was rooted in the state of its uh, public preparedness. Be that as it may, um, Dawan and uh, Narsima had a fantastic uh, time together doing some work on transition to turbulence, just as an introduction to non-experts. If you look at the buoyant flow around a lighted uh, candle that is shown here, <coughs> there is the initial part uh, that is uh, smooth, as I have uh, shown here, which is the so-called laminar part. And then there is a part here that is turbulent, very unpredictable and uh, disorderly. In between is this transitional state where it might just undergo some instability, maybe wavy in the beginning, but then it breaks down somehow to create this uh, turbulent state. The work that uh, Dawan and Narsima did was on this transitional state, although it was not on this flow, but it was on this flow which was of aerodynamic importance. So the flow is from left to right on the bottom uh, picture here. This is a plate on which the flow uh, happens to arise. And here is the initial laminar part. And here is the final turbulent state. And this transitional state in between was what concerned uh, Aaron at the time he was working in Bangalore. If you look down on this uh, plate, um, what you see are the crests of the waves of perturbations that you may impose. And then these waves become a, um, a wave three-dimensional. Um, and then the amplitude of those things grow. They, they become somewhat irregular. And at some point, they break down into these so-called turbulent spots. And these turbulent spots grow with, with distance and eventually merge together to form this so-called fully developed uh, turbulence. So Narasimha's contribution was around uh, here at the time. This is a picture that is uh, taken from the announcement of the talk. And here are these waves that I mentioned earlier. What uh, Narasimha uh, uh, showed was that um, well, let me backtrack a bit. When he began his research, the prevailing view was that the breakdown of the flow into these spots that I mentioned already occurs everywhere randomly in the flow. But Aaron was led to stipulate, uh, looking at the data of his own and uh, those of others available then, that the breakdown really occurs uh, at a fixed position um, in the direction of the stream technically as a delta function. And he showed that the consequence of that hypothesis were completely consistent with uh, measurements, his own and others, as I said. Uh, Professor Badri Narayanan uh, once told me that the use of the delta function in this theory was inspired by Arendt's father, not uh, Dhawan, with whom he was working at that time. Now, this is the uh, paper in its entirety uh, the first one written by Aaron, singly authored, as you can uh, you can see, and uh, very succinct, and also very clearly written. The principal statement of the paper is highlighted here, which you probably cannot read, but it uh, basically says that by assuming that all breakdown occurs along a single line x equals xt, or if his function g of x were to be approximated by Dirac's delta function, one obtains a simple formula which agreed quite well with all the data. Uh, and the agreement is shown in these uh, two pictures. The short paper was uh, followed up um, by a longer one with Dawan, published in the Journal of Fluid Mechanics, as uh, Jagdish already mentioned, in 1958. Even more than 60 years later, the work continues to get cited uh, also, as Jagdish pointed out, maybe some 20 times a year. The following fact is probably not known to many people. The entire Indian Institute of Science was reviewed uh, around 1972 or 73, probably the only time in its history that uh, it got done. I was a student at IASC then. 
the committee was chaired by uh, Professor uh, T. R. Sheshadri from the University of Delhi. The committee cited uh, this transition work as uh, one of the high quality pieces of work that em had emerged from the institute. Sir James Lighthill was on the committee, though he did not actually come to visit Bangalore. So the comment likely um, originated from him. So in an interview given, um, uh, given uh, to Bhavna, Aaron recalled that the end of two years of uh, research at IISC, as I said, he had done two years of coursework earlier. He finished, um, well, it should be his research. And it has gone very well from both Aaron's point of view as well as Dhawan's. So Dhawan said, I've taught you everything I can. Now we must go abroad. Why don't you go to Caltech? Well, to Caltech he did go. And on his way to Pasadena here with his mother, aunt, and uh, uncle. And I show this picture um, mainly to emphasize the sartorial splendor he displayed in the photograph. This is the only time I have seen him with a suit and uh, tie. Um, but also uh, the fashionable hairstyle that he maintained at uh, the time. Of course, his expression is uh, stern and uh, to me a little bit uh, diffident, as in all the pictures I saw or I have seen until now, uh, until this point in his life. And uh, to Caltech he went, and here is how he described uh, uh, to become um, uh, the student of Hans Liepmann, who was also uh, the Havens, uh, supervisor. And he describes his uh, Caltech um, uh, beginning days here. I went to Caltech as Satish's boy, and uh, that is Dhawan. I went there on his recommendation and also with the knowledge that I had already done some work and that it involved significant experimental and theoretical components. I think I sort of walked in and it was entirely because of Dhawan. They valued Dhawan's opinion enormously because they knew him to be completely reliable and conscientious and I was immediately accepted. And uh, this is RN um, sometime during his uh, his um, Caltech days. I myself think he underwent a transformation of disposition in the sunny optimism of uh, Southern California of those days. But I will not take time to discuss that uh, now. Uh, in uh, Caltech, at that time, Eric Mahler Christensen from MIT was visiting, and he was a very charismatic guy. And Caltech was uh, in the in the efforts to recruit him from MIT. And uh, Cal uh, Hans Liepmann assigned uh, assigned RN to Eric. So Eric and RN wrote up this paper together in the Journal of Fluid Mechanics. And Liepmann asked. Uh, RN to write up his thesis based on this work, but RN said uh, he really wanted to do something more and settled on the flow of rarefied gases, which was the one of the interests of Hans at the time. He published uh, three single author uh, papers, um, as shown here, uh, very unusual, I would say, and then also a fourth paper with his advisor, and for that, uh, he received his uh, PhD in 1961. In this thesis, he wrote all his equations um, by hand, beautifully and perfectly horizontally, as I've ever seen. In fact, I was very jealous of that when I saw it first. That's a picture at uh, graduation. Now he came back to RN as, uh, he came back to the Indian Institute of Science, as everybody knows, in 62. Here's a picture with uh, Hans Liepmann when Hans uh, visited in 1964. This is RN, and this is Hans Liepmann. This is uh, Professor H.S. Mukunda, who had a very distinguished career at IASC. And this is Desh Pandey, also equally distinguished career in uh, the Indian Institute of Science and uh, Jawaharlal Nehru Center. And the picture of RN with a number of people in the lab whom uh, the people in the aerospace uh, department will easily recognize. 
Now, in the meantime, somehow, um, a former classmate of Aaron, uh, Dr. Neelima's uh, sister's husband by then, was instrumental in making introduction between Aaron and Neelima, who got married soon after, on the 14th of uh, December, 1965. I was uh, very pleased to uh, see her today. And this is uh, Neelima being uh, felicitated by um, Dhawan around the 60th birthday celebrations of Aaron. And this is them uh, together some years later. And uh, now I'm going to show you a picture of uh, Professor Maitre in Narasimha. Um, that's her. Even though she is now an accomplished and a thoughtful researcher, her charm that uh, brought this smile on Aaron's face, as far as I'm concerned, remains the same. I'm uh, very pleased that they're both uh, part of this uh, meeting today, celebrating uh, Aaron's uh, 88th birthday. By coincidence, Aaron passed away on their 55th wedding anniversary. Let me now turn to uh, relaminarization, which was a part of the title of my talk. His uh, first paper on relaminarization was this, um, actually with me, in 1973. And his last paper, so far as I know, is with uh, Mukund, Vishwanath, and uh, Crouch, uh, 2012. And so this spans about 40 years already. But actually, well before that, uh, there was this paper that Badri Narayanan wrote in General of Fluid Mechanics. And if you read the acknowledgments, it says that the author thanks Dr. Satish Dhawan, um, who was uh, Badri's uh, formal thesis advisor, and then says, Dr. Rodan Narsimha has spent a great deal of time discussing with me in detail many aspects of the problem, in particular the analysis regarding the decay of turbulence and the critical Reynolds number was suggested by him. This was 68. <clears throat> and then there was this paper by Badri and Ramji, 69. And uh, it's the same thing. It says, uh, the use of the surface heat transfer gauge was suggested by Professor Rodam Narsimha, etc. And uh, therefore, uh, Aaron had been thinking about the problem very seriously for quite a few years before he wrote this uh, first paper. And uh, therefore, my characterization that it was 50 years of uh, thinking on the problem is not at all an exaggeration. Now, if you look at the total number of publications Aaron had on relaminarization, I have listed all of them because there are not that many, 10 at the most. Um, now, I have shown in violet the papers by Badri and his student, and also a MS thesis by Vivekanandan, which had some influence, and two others in red, uh, which sort of followed up uh, on, um, on the basis of his inspiration. Let's say a total of uh, something like 10. Uh, he probably wrote about 300 papers. I did not count them, but I think that's about right. And also wrote about 50 um, pieces as a scientific intellectual, chart articles and opinions and things of that sort. So the fraction of papers he wrote on the relaminarization is really very small. Yet, uh, they garner about 15% uh, of RN citations, and probably more important, more than 50% of the total citations to the topic. Uh, that means he really had a huge impact on the, on the development of the subject uh, in some quantitative way, even though this is uh, somewhat imperfect. So I think, uh, therefore, it is uh, worth celebrating this uh, particular aspect. So I'll now ask, what is relaminarization? I show this figure from the paper written um, uh, with his former student, uh, P.R. Vishwanath, uh, who turned out to be one of Aaron's uh, good friends later, and also Professor A. Prabhu, who had a, a very successful career at the Indian Institute of Science. Here, you see a pipe, uh, this pipe here, that is coiled around another uh, bigger uh, cylinder. 
and the flow is going through the pipe in this direction. If you look at the top of the flow, as the entry to the coil pipe, you can see that a dye, a red dye that is introduced into the uh, flow, mixes up very readily, as is characteristic of any turbulent flow. If you go three coils down and introduce a green dye like this, and the dye does not mix at all with the flow, so in fact, it is displaying the characteristic of a laminar flow. So a flow that is coming in here turbulent, by virtue of being bent around, becomes uh, laminar. In fact, a little later, we wrote this paper, which uh, had quantitative measurements of uh, turbulent fluctuations. And as you can see, it sort of becomes uh, laminar as you go further into the coil. So that's relaminarization. Now, uh, it's not just some exotic situation like this that um, has relaminarization going on. You can look at two very important problems, uh, aerodynamic problems, in which Arun was very much interested. This is the gas turbine blade. And if you measure uh, here the fluctuations, you see that they are uh, turbulent, uh, intense fluctuations. But by the time the flow goes around here, it has already essentially killed all the fluctuations, has become more or less uh, laminar. Now, similarly, if you take a flow in, uh, in front of a bluff body, if you measure the uh, fluctuations, if you measure the signal uh, in the front of the body, it displays all the characteristics of a turbulent flow. But the time you get to stations L and G here, you can see that the fluctuations have all but uh, disappeared. They, of course, uh, reappear uh, soon after. And that is uh, something else uh, uh, we will uh, discuss uh, very briefly. By the way, one of my minor accomplishments was to get uh, RN to adopt the term uh, relaminarization instead of a reverse transition that uh, Badri, he, and uh, Dhawan and others in the world had been using. Mostly because when the relaminarized flow uh, becomes uh, turbulent again, it's uh, very complicated to explain it as a transition back to turbulence that has undergone reverse transition, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, I think uh, the logic was very clear, and I was happy that it got adopted. Arun himself saw relaminarization as a part of the uh, big picture on uh, turbulence management, as he explained in a preface to this book that um, Hans and uh, he edited, which was the result of the IU Time Symposium in 1987 held in uh, Bangalore, to which um, uh, many people had come. Hassan Nagib was there, for instance. So let me ask, what insights did Aaron and uh, me, let's say, uh, bring to bear on the problem of relaminarization? There are uh, numerous instances of relaminarization, and we discussed uh, many of them in our uh, review. But uh, they're best organized um, in uh, three classes, which I have uh, described. The laminarization does not always mean that the fluctuations disappear entirely, although that is part of what happens, as I've shown here by the red. But in some cases, the fluctuations may exist. They do not perish, but they become ineffective in the transport of mass, momentum, and heat because they are overwhelmed by some other agent, dominated by another agent, such as the favorable pressure gradient. And also, fluctuations need not be destroyed at the small scale, as it happens in this uh, thing in the first item. But at the large scale at which they are usually generated by some body force, but this I will not talk about at all. I will talk about this and this, the top two uh, here. So let's talk about fluctuations um, disappear and create uh, relaminarization. I have a pipe with a certain diameter A uh, in the inlet. And the flow here is uh, turbulent. And the pipe expands and then settles down to a different diameter B. If B is larger than A, as in this figure, the velocity goes down by a factor B by A squared. And the length scale goes up by the factor B by A. 
and therefore the Reynolds number uh, reduces by a factor A by B. So here there may be a certain Reynolds number. Here there is a smaller Reynolds number by a factor uh, equivalent to the ratio A by B. It's possible that if you start out with a turbulent flow, if this Reynolds number here is below a certain critical value, then in this in this uh, part of the flow, it could become uh, laminar in fact, and it could not sustain the fluctuations. This is uh, what uh, Badri had already found in uh, 1968, and uh, that the uh, downstream of that expansion, the fluctuations decay exponentially. And uh, in fact, uh, that's the kind of formula. The minor thing that I did was to show that k to the power one third is linear in Reynolds number, the downstream Reynolds number, and you plot the data, all of them in this fashion, they meet at 1500, which means that um, the flow cannot be sustained at Reynolds numbers greater than 1500. This observation has now become important in the dynamical systems perspective of uh, turbulence, though some of the research researchers don't seem to know this result, or they add my name when they see me in the audience or something like that. The other thing is uh, similarly uh, true of uh, the mean velocity, not just fluctuations. So here is the laminar profile that you expect. And here is the profile that you measure at any intermediate state. And that delta U is the difference between what you expect in a laminar flow and what you measure. And you plot this as a function of the distance. Again, they are uh, exponential uh, here. And this alpha um, is the coefficient. And again, a minor thing that I did was to show that alpha to the power 2 thirds is linear. And uh, in this fashion, and it meets here not at 1500, but maybe 1350. Um, but basically, it is the uh, same number, or in fact, maybe there are, in fact, uh, two uh, differences, uh, differences between the two fluctuations on the mean. It's sort of interesting that the problem was begun, uh, the problem of uh, relaminarization in uh, this context was begun under Dhawan's guidance nurtured through the work of uh, RN and uh, Badri in the next generation, so to speak. But it took one more generation uh, for us to come to some reasonable closure. Things in this area moved uh, very slowly, um, I should say. Unlike uh, areas such as uh, microelectronics or AI or uh, genomics or something like that. But the slow pace suited the RN's temperament uh, very well. Now let me talk a little bit about the next item, the one in which fluctuations are dominated by, by another ingredient, like a favorable pressure gradient. And um, when I uh, got into this act, I only knew of one paper, that is Badri's paper, Badri and Ramji, uh, uh, this paper, Badri and Ramji. Now I observed some discrepancies, and I went to R in out of curiosity to ask him if I could uh, somehow try to um, try to resolve this discrepancy, and he said uh, fine. And I went and measured something, and it got resolved, and I showed it to him. He said, why don't you do this, and so on. This uh, bootstrapping escalated uh, rapidly, and uh, what began as a curiosity became my central research problem. At that time, in fact, there were only a few papers, like the all of them I have listed here, are all the centers in the world where the work was going on are here. This one is in California, uh, Southern California. This was in uh, MIT, and this in Cambridge, and this is Bangalore. And in fact, Bangalore was uh, leading the effort, I must say. And so I got into the act, and I, of course, became uh, very familiar with all these uh, things very fast. And uh, our and we wrote up a paper, and for the um, uh, for this uh, Bhavna thing that I mentioned earlier, uh, where they included one of my little articles, um, 
I described uh, my interaction with RN during the time I was doing this work and the thesis work and all that, and I will not uh, repeat them, but there are some lessons for younger people if they are interested. Now, how did we analyze this and what was the difficulty and how did we resolve this? So, suppose I take a wind tunnel section like this and I constrict the area for the flow by putting in an obstacle like this. And the flow is now being forced to go through a smaller area and therefore it will have to accelerate because it's subsonic flow. And so the force is now, the, the acceleration or the pressure gradient is now acting uh, very strongly on the flow. So here is the sketch that, uh, that we actually generated at the time. So the flow accelerates like this. Initially the acceleration is small because it's a subsonic flow. And uh, in that region, we thought that the flow might behave more or less like a turbulent flow under modest acceleration. That's what we call region one. If you go a little bit further uh, down, uh, then overwhelming effect of the pressure gradient will make the flow sort of laminar-like because it freezes all the uh, turbulence. And that's the region three, as we described it. And somewhere along here, a new uh, inner boundary layer develops. And this region here is just a remnant of what was coming on, uh, coming on uh, here. And as soon as the pressure gradient is released, the flow gets back to uh, turbulence, as if um, by vengeance it has been hiding there and uh, wanted to just reappear. Um, that's region four. So if in fact you measure something like a skin friction, uh, this is what happens. You see it goes, uh, initially it grows like a, a turbulent flow increases in, in skin friction. Thereafter undergoes a precipitous drop and when the retransition occurs, uh, you have uh, skin friction going up again. We could calculate all this without any serious problem. Uh, by assuming that the uh, that the acceleration was very large or asymptotics in that sense, except for this region two, uh, where uh, we really couldn't know. Uh, it was neither fully turbulent nor laminar-like, um, and we called it the island of ignorance or something else, I can't remember, but uh, that's what I thought. And uh, in many cases, it was uh, relatively small, so it did not uh, matter that much for practical purposes. Um, the idea that a thin boundary layer develops uh, here was actually um, a taken uh, from uh, a supersonic experiment. I show here the picture that uh, Vishwanath took, um, although this was known um, uh, even uh, before them. You see this thin boundary layer here uh, developing. Is a supersonic flow, so there are differences. Nevertheless, the general idea is uh, how uh, how we thought about it. Anyhow, um, that's uh, mostly what uh, uh, we did in uh, commemorating uh, the hundredth anniversary of this uh, famous paper by Ludwig Prontl on boundary layer theory. Aaron wrote this short paper, which said, "Divide, conquer, and unify." And that's really what uh, Pronto uh, uh, used. And that's really what we are doing here, although, of course, neither one of us thought of it that way, uh, certainly at that time. Um, so uh, this is this I already described. This slide shows how the whole theory worked. Uh, excuse me for a second. Um, this slide shows how the skin friction measured and uh, computed uh, agreed with each other. Taking this, for example, this uh, fully turbulent calculations, which was very easy to do at the time, and the quasi-laminar theory, and this is this uh, island of ignorance that uh, we called our um, whatever else. So that was our uh, contribution. And this island of ignorance is, for example, the, uh, being studied now, let's say, in the laboratory of uh, Owen Ramesh and uh, others. Now, the, uh, the question was, if the fluctuations here do not really disappear, 
how is it that this flow is maintained uh, laminar? Uh, and uh, that's because um, acceleration means that the flow becomes very stable. And when it is very stable, uh, all the fluctuations uh, have uh, no chance to grow. And when, of course, the boundary layer Reynolds number exceeds the stability Reynolds number, which goes down as you release the acceleration, then uh, you have a, you have retransition. Here is the boundary layer Reynolds number growing in one case, another case, another case, etc. And here is the critical Reynolds number, which we could calculate uh, on the basis of the measured shape factor. And when they meet, uh, the, it's inevitable that retransition occurs. And this was actually the retransition point observed. It's not perfect, but in many cases, it's sort of agreed to within uh, this kind of accuracy. So I will uh, now uh, maybe make a few remarks on um, Aaron's uh, legacy. As I say, this is a kind of ceremonial lecture, and I do want to spend a little time beyond his uh, technical work, although I will say something about technical work also. Um, his legacy is multidimensional. I can uh, only talk about three uh, strands of his legacy. One of them is his institutional legacy. At the Indian Institute of Science, he was the dean, uh, he was the chair of the aeronautics department, and he was the, uh, the creator and convener of the Center for Atmospheric and Ocean Sciences. In NAL, on civil aviation matters, etc., and you recall this uh, very nice uh, emotional video, I was actually driven to emotion uh, the very last, uh, last part of it. And uh, in NIAS, he focused on uh, Indic science and philosophy, as besides uh, his usual uh, director uh, job. And uh, JNCASR, Engineering Mechanics Unit, was his creation. And at the Indian Academy of Sciences, where he was the president for some time, he started Sadhana for Engineering Sciences and uh, Resonance for General Audience. And for the Department of Science Space, he was the longest serving member of the Space Commission. And I think he worked uh, very hard towards that. And, and I know there were critical instances uh, where his contribution was tremendous. He was the member of the um, Scientific Advisory Committee, the Prime Minister, two Prime Ministers, Rajiv Gandhi and Manmohan Singh. And uh, during the Manmohan time period, um, Ministry of Earth Sciences was created, mainly RN's uh, initiative. And uh, so it's obvious that uh, all these institutions are doing something to um, commemorate him. For example, the Indian Institute of Science instituted this uh, endowment lecture. And the third one that I have to the very right should have happened a few hours earlier but had to be postponed for um, a number of reasons. But it will continue, I'm sure. And uh, Duveri uh, Subramaniam sent me this uh, slide of the tunnel at the Aeronautic Aerospace Department that is will be named or has been named as Rodham Narsimha Hypersonic Wind Tunnel. I'm very grateful to Duveri for uh, this. And uh, in NAL, they, this is a picture I took from a newspaper article, so it's a very fuzzy, Times of India, March 31st, 2021, where they created the Rodan Narsima Civil Aircraft um, Center, which is really renaming the Civil Aircraft Design and Development Center. And uh, this is a picture at the opening. Another one, I'm sorry, I can't really tell who is who um, because of the masks and everything but it's clear what the event was about. So in fact, I have often wondered uh, whether these many institutions will do different things to commemorate uh, RN's uh, memory. Um, and uh, what would be really nice as a personal uh, statement 
is that uh, it would be really nice if all these organizations somehow came together instead of uh, multiple fragments. It would be nice to have one large event befitting uh, his uh, persona. So uh, that is something that I will carry on in the background um, as a discussion with all the important people um, uh, in, in Bangalore. Now, equally important is Aaron's scientific legacy, which uh, shines through his many publications. I said uh, he has about 300 like, publications, 50 general articles, opinions, editorials, obituaries, and things of that sort. Now, the clarity of his thought and analysis come through in each of them, and he took great pleasure in writing, and actually even seeing his name in print, he once told me, with uh, some pleasure, actually, with pure pleasure. And the papers uh, cover, uh, as we know, stability, transition to uh, turbulence, intermittency, spots, bursts, small-scale structure, entrainment, and of course, uh, relaminarization, etc. And he worked on rarefied gases and shocks at Caltech and with uh, people like Deshpande and Das. And it's a very high quality. And uh, his work on uh, aerodynamics, atmospheric dynamics, clouds and monsoons were very trend-setting. And his work on uh, science and philosophy of uh, Indian past particularly Yoga Vasista, is a collection of gems to those who are interested in such things. And of course, nonlinear strings that uh, Jagdish mentioned already. So if he had done nothing else, this would be great. And uh, his name would live on. But his true legacy, I think, is the, is the number of young people whose thinking are in shape. At the top of the list is uh, 33 PhD students, all of whom I've listed here. This found at the top, and uh, I'm here number five or something like that. Um, some of them, I should say, <clears throat> were jointly supervised uh, with the Badri and Prabhu and others. And 50 master's projects, eight postdocs, some 10 short-term workers and all that. What was really important in the impact that Arun has had was the geographic concentration in Bangalore of uh, his intellectual descendants. I just list the ones that um, I could think of. Look at all this. Deshpande, Prabhu, Anand Sainam, Day, Bhatt, uh, Vasudeva Murthy, Rama Govindrajan, Ramesh, Jayavan Tarkeri, Aditya, Saurabh Divan, Divuri, Subramanian with a spelling error here. Vishwanath, Egnaran, Desai, Vidyadhar, Mudkavi, Datta, all of them. I mean, there must be many others too. Unfortunately, I have to say Vasudeva Murthy is no longer with us. They transformed the landscape of fluid mechanics research in Bangalore and India in general, and even the world, if you include the number of people who left uh, India and uh, went abroad. So it was a, uh, all of this would not have happened if Aaron really had moved around from one town to another, or uh, if Bangalore was not such an intellectual powerhouse in general. And uh, so uh, that's his uh, true legacy in my view. And uh, Aaron's students have had uh, students of their own, and they in turn have had uh, their students and so on. Many of them know Aaron and think uh, very greatly of him and emulate him. I myself have had students who had their students and their students in turn, and in one instance, a next generation student. So Aaron does live to be a great, great, great grandfather academically, though I fear that he was not aware of anyone beyond his uh, grandchildren. When um, Aaron turned um, 80 or thereabouts. Uh, Professor Rama Govindrajan had prepared this diagram of uh, his descendants. It's a very impressive diagram. Um, but in the years since, which is about six or seven years, it has uh, bulged very significantly and could not be contained in any graph, even if you reduce the size uh, substantially. For example, um, 
I choose uh, this part, let's say the red part, which is the uh, Ramas part of uh, the tree. And here is how it has uh, ballooned in the last so many years. So the point of this uh, slide is simply that, in fact, it was not only the personal work and the institution building, uh, but also about the people that uh, his uh, thinking influenced in a great way. So I want to conclude. Uh, the last time I shared a stage with uh, RN, uh, it was at the inauguration of the Bhavna Trust in January of 2018. In order from left to right is M.S. Narsimhan, whom uh, many of you might know, a very distinguished mathematician, who alas is also uh, not with us anymore. Here is Arun, that's me, and this is Arvinda on the right. And um, when it was uh, my turn to speak, I said that uh, I might accomplish as much as Arun did if I lived another uh, 50 years. It was uh, rhetorical to some degree um, because I won't live another 50 years. And the deeply felt sentiment was that um, it was not about uh, matching the quantity of work and uh, this sort of thing, uh, although that is uh, voluminous and very difficult to match. It is the quality, depth, and the contemplative substance of the writings that are in, um, created. The creativity um, combined with uh, his love for analysis and logic. The this quality usually improves with age, um, unless one lets go somehow. Uh, if I last another 50 years, which I won't, I might match his uh, in that uh, regard, uh, was the comment uh, relevant, and that's what I meant. So um, uh, in uh, here, I go back to uh, in the very left corner here is a Sanskrit uh, quotation, uh, which I will not read, but uh, here is what it meant. And the context is that in Yaksha Prasna in uh, Mahabharata, uh, Veda Vyasa put these following words in the mouth of the oldest uh, Pandava prince, uh, Yudhishthira. The original uh, as a, is not very long, and uh, it says, uh, it, it means this. Logical reasoning is not without assumptions. Vedic or scriptural revelations are numerous, so there is no unity to them. Now, a single wise man's thesis can be accepted as fact. The essence of right conduct is a very subtle secret indeed. So the only recourse that is often left to us is to walk in the footsteps of uh, great men. And I think uh, Aaron was a great man. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Srinivasan. It was a very nice uh, way that uh, you really blended his uh, personal life with re-laminarization. So it was really enlightening, and I really thank you for this. So it is my Pleasure to propose the vote of thanks. We have come to the end of it. I hope that uh, it wasn't for the pandemic, we would have been meeting this personally and we could have celebrated it much more. And uh, But anyway, I really thank uh, Professor Srinivasan for taking time and uh, bringing us through this journey, combining with uh, the relaminization with his personal life and his technical life and his, uh, the way his, what we call the RN series has built over it. We call Taylor series, number of terms, we call it RN series now. So there's a lot of series that is going on, uh, many generations. So I really thank you for this. Uh, so as a, uh, uh, a token of our appreciation, we would like to present this memento to this, we cannot physically present you. We will send you this. So I'm just going to share this. 
uh, I I want you to unshare your screen so okay. that people know that what uh, moment. To I will I will unshare my screen. There are a number of uh, comments. Um, I don't know what they are. I haven't uh, read them. Yeah. Um, maybe somebody could read them and see uh, if there's anything interesting uh, that uh, we should uh, attempt to answer. Um, let's see, where do I go and uh, um, how do I unshare? Stop, stop uh, presenting. Okay, great. Yeah. yeah, thank you. So I'd like to uh, share the uh, window here. So I hope you are able to see this. So we have made this uh, momento to you. Thank you, sir, very much. So we will mail it to your address. We wish we could have given you in person. But unfortunately, due to the prevailing situation, thank you very much uh, for sharing your thoughts. I'm uh, uh, very grateful for giving me this. I'm grateful to you for giving me this opportunity. And uh, um, I'm sure there will be many other occasions to talk about our Thank you very much. So I'll also like to uh, thank uh, Mrs. Nilima uh, Nasima for uh, gracing this occasion and uh, talking a few things about it and inaugurating. Thank you very much. Your presence has made a great, great difference to this inaugural lecture. Hope uh, this uh, uh, lecture continues the same way as the inaugural one has taken place. I'd like to thank uh, deeply uh, to Sir Indranil Mannad, the president of uh, INAE, for supporting this event with all enthusiasm. The moment we said that we want to do it, he readily agreed for it. So I really thank him. I really thank Professor Jagdish uh, to uh, give, uh, who gave a very good overview of uh, Nasima's technical contributions. Uh, and I'd like to even thank uh, NAL for sparing the video they did because we had very little time to make one. Uh, but uh, the two aspects was very clearly brought. One is his technical contribution, both by Srinivasan and Jagdish. And the other one is his real national contributions, what he has made to the civil aviation and the aerospace in general. And I'd like to thank uh, many distinguished scientists and uh, uh, engineers, his former students, uh, of many generations who took time to attend this to make this event a grand success. And uh, we really hope that uh, next, uh, 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 the, the, our memorial lecture, as Professor Shinvalson pointed out, we'll try to integrate all other organizations which want to make NAL, JNCSR, then IAC and INE together. We'll try to make it as one event and uh, this will again be held same day next year. So see you all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much all. So we bring to the end of this uh, program. Thanks again to Professor Shinwazan. Thank you. Thank you, Karis. So nice of you.